confused and frustrated. That's the reaction from most supplement buyers when exposed to the often conflicting opinions of industry experts. And NAD Plus precursor supplements are no exception. There are those who tell us that NR is best. There are those who tell us that NMN is best. And then there's those who tell us that neither work, implying that all we're likely experiencing is a placebo effect. So who really is telling the truth? Because these supplements are not cheap. And the last thing we want to be doing is throwing our money away in something that doesn't work. So in my attempt to clarify things, I've selected three highly qualified individuals, each of whom would appear to support one of the aforementioned stances. First, we have Dr. Charles Brenner, who very vocally favors NR over NMN, and for very specific reasons. Then we have Dr. David Sinclair, who is well known for favoring the effects of NMN over NR. And lastly, we have Dr. Peter Atia, who questions the efficacy of both NR and NMN oral supplements. So who's right? And could those benefits we experience from taking NAD precursor supplements perhaps just be down to the placebo effect? Let's find out what our experts have to say on the matter. And by the way, I've been using NAD precursors for several years now. I only use third-party lab-tested products and I currently buy from the aging research company Do Not Age. And they've very kindly provided viewers of this video with a 10% discount code, which I'm told will work with any of their products. First, we'll start with the opinion of Dr. Charles Brenner, NR's greatest supporter, and also, as it happens, NMN's greatest detractor. Dr. Brenner is a longtime researcher in the field of NAD biology, and he's credited with identifying NR's role as a vitamin precursor to NAD+. Dr. Brenner does have commercial ties with Chromadex, who both manufacture an NR supplement called True Niagen, and hold the rights to several patents relating to the manufacture and use of NR. However, I'll leave it to you to decide whether or not that may have any bearing whatsoever on his opinion. Dr. Brenner has conducted several well-controlled studies, all of which appear to confirm the efficacy of NR as an orally ingested supplement. However, I'd say it's a stretch to suggest that he's presented definitive proof regarding NR's superiority over NMN. Dr. Brenner's argument rests on his belief that in order to enter the cell, ingested NMN must first be converted to NR outside of the cell by losing the phosphate. And here's a short clip of Dr. Brenner explaining his stance. And in fact, when you do the experiment, which we and many other groups have done, where you have NMN on the outside of cells and you use valid analytical methods that can separate NMN to NR, you see that NMN is converted quantitatively, that means fully, to NR outside of the cell, then NMN goes into the cell, phosphate gets put on it, and now it's NMN inside the cell, and then it gets converted into NAD. This popular theory, however, has since been brought into question by Dr. Alessio Grossio's discovery of an elusive transporter molecule known as SLC12A8, which she's identified as a pathway by which NMN can supposedly enter the cell. Dr. Grossio, who's a researcher at the Buck Institute for Aging, published her study in 2019, and it's since been cited by David Sinclair and others. However, Dr. Brenner disputes her findings. Next up, we have Dr. David Sinclair, probably the world's most recognized life extension scientist and best known for his previous work on resveratrol and the seemingly continuous controversy surrounding it. In fact, David is never far from controversy and his role in the recent banning of NMN as a dietary ingredient by the FDA has certainly not done his reputation within the NMN supplement industry any favors. However, we're not here to judge the man's morals we're simply interested on the stance regarding the efficacy of NMN. And there would appear to be no doubt that Dr. Sinclair believes orally ingested NMN to be highly effective for the purposes of increasing NAD plus levels in the body. Sinclair has been involved in several well-controlled NMN studies, and those that I've looked at do appear to be pretty convincing regarding NMN's efficacy. Here's a short clip of Dr. Sinclair explaining some of the differences between NMN and NR. But I think you can do better. So the next thing along that you can give to the body is NR, nicotinamide riboside, which is a sugar added to vitamin B3, um, but lacking the phosphate. And that's sold as a supplement and has shown promise in some studies in humans. Um, the most notable one is ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease. Um, and there's 
then let's go to the next one, which is what I work on mostly, which is NMN, which is NR plus a phosphate. So now you've got the three main components, which are then combined into a, a double molecule that's now in AD. So if you give niacin or vitamin B3, now the cell has to find and scavenge sugar and phosphate. If you give NR, at least you've got the, the sugar, but you lack the phosphate, and then NMN has everything. And so one of the problems that I think as a scientist is that if you just give NR, your body has to find phosphate from somewhere. Where would it get it? It's in bones, it's in DNA. So you might have issues finding enough phosphate, and that might be why in practice, in mice, uh, and seemingly if you look at clinical trials in humans, NR is not boosting levels of NAD in the bloodstream as high as NMN does at the equivalent dose. Both Dr. Sinclair and Dr. Brennan's research does appear to provide some pretty compelling evidence to support the stance that both NR and NMN supplements can indeed provide worthwhile health benefits to aging adults, irrespective of which one might be better. Although perhaps we shouldn't rush to conclusions, at least not until we've heard the evidence to the contrary, which is coming up next. Lastly, I'm going to address the thoughts of Dr. Peter Atia. Now let me start by saying that Dr. Atia is, in my opinion, one of the most reliable information sources out there. And I have a great deal of respect for the man, not only with regard to his knowledge, but also his personal achievements, which are many. However, in this particular case, I'd suggest there might be reason to question his assumptions. So let me present you with what I know, and you can come to your own conclusions. Dr. Atia's stance would appear to be based mainly on a couple of studies conducted by Josh Rabinowitz, a researcher at Princeton and a former classmate of Dr. Atia's. One of Rabinowitz's studies found that orally administered NR and NMN was only taken up by the liver, where it was then made into NAD using tryptophan. Here's a short clip of Dr. Atia expressing his doubts. What are your thoughts on nicotinamide riboside supplementation for longevity? So, how, so, so cells cannot take up NAD. So a cell has to be able to make its own NAD. So the idea of giving precursors has become obviously the most interesting idea. Mm. Now what Rabinowitz's paper showed, and we should link to this, here's what the study showed. When you gave oral NR or NMN, the two popular precursors, only the liver could, make, could take them up and make NAD using tryptophan. No other cell in the body could take it up. So that would suggest to me that if you're taking oral NAD, uh, pardon me, oral NR or NMN, you're pretty much just giving it to your liver. And I've actually already spoken with a number of our patients who take supplemental NAD and I've, or take supplemental NR, and I've already said to them, you know, look, I think you're sort of flushing money down the toilet. Again, I don't think it's harmful. Now let's take a look at a short clip of Dr. Sinclair and Dr. Rhonda Patrick discussing the aforementioned Rabinowitz study. The, the question is with the nicotinamide riboside, there's been a little um, confusion about like, you know, whether or not nicotinamide riboside is even really getting converted into NAD inside cells and in different organs other than the liver. Um, this was this was this NAD flux paper yeah. um, that that was done by uh, Rabowinitz. Rabinowitz. Rabinowitz, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Um, looking at nicotinamide riboside and how orally um, at a dose half of what typically is used in all the other nicotinamide riboside animal studies. So we, we use double the, that dose Yeah, as well. so maybe, you know, the, the, this uh, NAD flux study that showed um, nicotinamide riboside given orally didn't form NAD in the muscle, but it did in the liver. Could have been a dose-dependent thing. It would make sense because we, we, we've done a lot of this in mice and now in humans, and that there's a threshold that you need to cross, you need to take a certain amount to, to get over probably the body's clearance mechanisms. Uh, and then you get up to a level that plateaus after about nine days. And they may have just been under that threshold, so the body was just clearing it out. With Dr. Sinclair suggesting that higher dosages are required to reach the necessary threshold level before uptake of cells other than in the liver can take place, I'd say there's at least some room for doubt regarding the relevance of Rabinowitz's study data. We're now going to do a short analysis of all that's so far been discussed and try to reach some logical conclusions regarding whether or not orally ingested NAD plus precursors are a worthwhile purchase. Now, if the Rabinowitz study results were to be duplicated using the dosages of NMN and NR suggested by Dr. Sinclair, 
then that would suggest that the benefits we experience using these supplements might simply be down to the placebo effect. Now, there's no denying that the placebo effect can in many cases be very powerful. However, I would suggest that in the case of NMN and NR, this is a highly unlikely scenario. And here's why. First, let's imagine we had zero study data indicating any benefit from taking NMN or NR, which of course we do, but let's imagine we don't. Next, let's recognize the undeniable fact that the vast majority of people using these advanced supplements are intelligent, extremely health conscious individuals, most of whom are likely sufficiently in tune with their own body to be able to perceive any real world benefits that might be taking place as opposed to, for example, an over-enthusiastic novice supplement buyer who may be overly influenced by hype. Putting all study data aside, the positive anecdotal evidence from the overwhelming majority of those taking NMN and NR supplements simply cannot be ignored. Placebo effects in general tend to be fairly short-lived and also tend to rapidly diminish when the person experiencing them is exposed to any type of negative press that might question the validity of the supplement in question. The very fact that this type of coverage has had little or no impact on user feedback can only serve to reinforce the validity of those perceived benefits. To imply that intelligent, experienced, health-conscious individuals might be imagining the long-term life-enhancing effects of these supplements is at best somewhat amusing and at worst, could be considered a little insulting. The NAD Plus precursor user base continues to grow rapidly. The high cost of these supplements doing little to dissuade buyers, and the positive feedback from these users continues to mount. I doubt very much that the placebo effect is responsible for this. Now, irrespective of who is right or wrong regarding which pathway is being used by these supplements to exert their effects, one thing we most definitely can be sure of is that these supplements appear to be improving both the quality of life and the health of countless users. And that can only be a good thing. And in response to those ultra-cautious individuals who are always the first to declare, but we don't know what the long-term risks of using these supplements are, I would suggest that perhaps more importantly, we do know what the long-term risks of not using them are. And that will continue to be my personal motivation for using every one of the various health supplements that I currently take. Many thanks for watching. And lastly, as always, take care, be healthy, and see you all again soon.